morning everybody i hope you're having an awesome day so do you consistently blame other people for your crappy life oh really um do you find yourself always looking for someone else to blame well that's a little bit about what we're going to talk about today is do you consistently blame others for your crappy life so hi i'm jackie schwab I am the founder of the Pressplate Lifestyle Signature System and also a professional success coach. So I was talking to a client, one of my clients who I adore, and she, she starts out a lot of our conversations with, ah, oh, my boss is an a-hole. She doesn't say a-hole though, you know, she said in some other colorful words as well. And, and, and I get it, right? Her boss is an a-hole. Um, but what ends up say, what ends up happening is she behaves in a certain kind of way, and then she's like, "Well, it's not my fault I behave that way." Um, so what we've been working on is this idea of letting go of that blame game, and and not as much to be like, "You're naughty, you should stop blaming others," but more, if you stop looking for other people to blame, you get to hold the power yourself, right? You have the power to stop blaming other people which means you have the power to change the situation. So um, letting go of blame actually can become more of an empowerment tool and a lot less of a, you're naughty, you should start doing it. And the other thing is like blaming others for the way your life is going, it's, it's not really your fault. It's a very common reaction. Nobody wants to be the guy, you know, essentially holding the curve ball or holding the ball. Um, and so a lot of people do that. You find yourself wondering how you even ended up in this place in the first place. Um, if you're confronting like challenging feelings because someone made you feel some sort of way, it can feel easier to just pass that buck, right? Um, but after you do all that blaming and when you point that finger at others, notice where the rest of the fingers are pointing, right? Um, you might have initially felt a bit better and soothed the idea that, you know, it wasn't your fault or you didn't make any mistakes, but eventually you're left alone just with yourself and blaming other people just leaves you feeling powerless. Like if it's their fault and they're the ones that made it happen, how do you, how do you change? What do you change? How can you get out of it? Well, the fact is we can't change other people's reactions, right? We can only change our own reactions. And so we've got to figure out how to dust ourselves off, kick the blame to the curb, and stop giving our power away by blaming other people and try to find solutions that really do allow us to, you know, take the blame off of our own shoulders and theirs by just taking control of our own lives. So I wanted to give you some ideas to consider if you find that maybe you're blaming others quite a bit and you really want to just gain your power back and stop letting them tell you how things should go. I mean, the fact is your boss probably is an a-hole, right? And you can't make him stop being an a-hole. But what you can do is respond differently versus um, reacting, right? So so what's what's something we can do well the first thing that we can consider <clears throat> is that we can take responsibility for our own life and I, I know that that seems trite and very simple but whether you're married or single if you have a bunch of kids you're childless you made decisions at how your life got to be at that point this is now all about you. So maybe, maybe at one point it was someone else's fault, right? Maybe when you were a kid, your mom and dad did some sort of thing, or your boss acted some sort of way, or your spouse, wife, partner, husband was a douchebag, right? I get it. But now you're aware that you're the only one that can change your reactions. And now you know what the issues are. It's kind of on you to fix them. You know, your life from now on is the way it is because of you. And your life essentially probably is the way it is now because of you. So take ownership, right? There's power in ownership. Um, giving your power up to the other person isn't, isn't a way to feel empowered. So from here on out, 
consider it a cop-out when you're blaming someone else for a choice that you made. Consider it a cop-out if you blame your boss as being an a-hole for you having a project late or for you not feeling empowered at work. Now, I get it. It's kind of good news and bad news at the same time. After all, you know, you want your life to change and you want to be responsible for it. But it also means that to hold all that power and create the life you want, you have to take responsibility for it. So you can't blame anyone else but yourself now. Hopefully that's a good thing. What is the second idea? Like what else can we do? Because maybe this whole taking responsibility thing seems a bit vague, maybe even too big. So what's something else? Well, another thing you can do is learn from the past. Um, consider a few specific incidences where you've blamed someone else for your choices. Um, I know this morning, uh, an example is my husband was a bit grumpy, right? And so I was like, why are you so grumpy? And he's like, because it's earlier today, you said this and this and this. He was actually right, right? I responded really snarky at him um, a little earlier that morning, and it sort of set his mood off, right? So I was running around in my head blaming him for being a butthole, but really, I kind of started off the butthole, right? I started off it. So if you think about some incidences where you blame some other people, and then how did that turn out in the end? Like in this case, it turned out awful. Like he is in a bad mood. Everyone's yelling at everyone. It just, it was just not good. The kids are grumpy. The other kids crying. All of that because I snapped at him because he didn't look for the shirt, right? That my son needed for a school. So um, how, how do those situations turn out? Another one is like, did you lose a friend? And do you have a family member that no longer talks to you because of how you behaved? Um, there really is very few instances where anything positive can come out of you blaming someone else for your situation. So number two is consider, consider learning from the past. Now, that's a doozy, right? So there's another one that you can try as you're working on this new habit, which is to say you're sorry. So if you tell another person that something that happened in your life is all their fault, like apologize for the comments as soon as you're aware that you made them. Um, it's, it's kind of like the 12-step program for blaming, right? When, you, when you're in any other kind of 12-step program, the first thing is awareness, right? And the next one is you know, telling the people that you've harmed that you're sorry. So it's an important step because one of the major ways to stop blaming others is to acknowledge it and say you're sorry. And when you're pointing the finger at them, realizing that you have more fingers pointing at you. Um, so in, in order to change what you're doing, you have to recognize your mistakes and, and you have to own them and even feel a little bit of that icky feeling that you feel when you have to tell someone you're sorry for doing something that was kind of cruddy, right? So what else can you do? So number four of five, don't worry, we won't go on here forever. So what else can we do? So if we um, started out by taking responsibility and we're starting to learn from the past, you said you were sorry, what else can you do going forward? Well, think before you blame. It's similar to like think before you talk, um, something else that I'm working on, I suspect. But if you catch yourself blaming someone else for the situation in your life, Think about the situation a little harder before maybe opening your big mouth. Two ears, right? Two eyes and one of these mouths. So ask yourself, what's really happening? Who did what? What was your part in this? How did you react to this? What were your options? Um, how could you respond different in the future? So if we think about this morning, now my husband's running around being super helpful. He's getting one of the kids out the door for school. He's grabbing another one of the kids. He came down with their clothes. Notice that I noticed that the said kid has on a blue shirt. And the said kid needs to wear a red shirt today because there's a um, play that's going on and his red shirt's part of his costume. Um, I say to my husband, hey, he has to wear the red shirt today. And he looks at me and he goes, well, I don't know where you put the red shirt. Maybe he didn't say it with that tone, but I I rebutted with a tone, right? I'm like, well, dude, seriously, it was sitting on the bed. I just put on the, you can't see it on the dresser. It was really snarky, guys. <laughs> so, um, And so then he's not pleasant for the next half an hour. And finally, I'm like, what's your deal, dude? Why are you being such a jerk? And he's like, I was just trying to get stuff done this morning. And then you were like, what did you do with the big suit? Like, and I'm like, oh yeah, okay, probably, right? So ask yourself, what really happened and who did what? 
my part in this was the beginning. I reacted really snotty um, and I had other options. I could have just gone up and got the shirt. I could have said, oh, I put on the dresser. Sorry, I didn't think to tell you. Or um, maybe I could have just went upstairs, got the shirt, came downstairs and helped him. Right. So lots of ways I could have responded in a better way that would have had a bit, much better outcome. I, I definitely believe that today has been an interesting start. So and then give yourself some time to process the situation. Right. That way you won't be compelled to say something rash out of frustration. Um, perhaps when my husband said his thing and I felt it was snarky. Instead of responding, I could have just ran upstairs, grabbed a shirt, came downstairs with it, right? There was no reason for it to escalate that way, especially when we're both tired and it's early and busy. And so the fifth idea, right? What's the fifth thing that you could potentially do to get over this blame game crud, right? Is yeah, seek some professional help, right? Um, there's no shame in asking for help to build better habits, right? There's no shame in asking for help if you can't seem, seem to shake blaming others. Um, if you find yourself kind of caught in this unproductive cycle at pointing your finger at others when your life isn't going well, you can look at hiring a coach or a counselor depending on how deep the issue is. You know, if you just need to develop a habit of being you know, less blaming, this uh, definitely seek a coach. But if you find there's some deep seated stuff going on in there, right, then you find some childhood trauma or some ways that you felt you were treated by your family, then take your life into your own hands that way and seek some help, right? Uh, again, there's never a shame in asking for help. Um, people like to be asked for help, believe it or not, they really do. So guys, seriously, when you leave the blame game behind your life, becomes your own. It's super empowering. Um, all that power is in your hands, right? The sky's the limit when you stop blaming others. You get to empower yourself and take your life back. And of course, it's not going to happen in five seconds. Of course, it's going to take a little effort and you're going to have to practice um, and, and make a habit of catching yourself when you're doing it. But it's completely, totally and 100% worth it. Well, if you guys liked this content or you've got value from it, please, please, please click like or share with a friend who maybe is always blaming you for crap. And then head on over to that free Success with Balance for Entrepreneurs Facebook group and connect with other people like you that are trying to get over some of their hangups and starting to um, have a more positive and empowered life, right? So this is Jackie Schwab reminding you to embrace your pause, play the game you want to play, or play the game you want to win. You know, both of those work. And prosper with a life by design, not by default. Thanks so much, you guys. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And remember, stop blaming others for your consistently crappy life, right? You can make it better and you can change it. All right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.